Hi everyone, this is Pam Hubler. I am one of your ShakeUp Learning training members and I'm super excited to be with you for the Back to School Conference for Teachers and Educational Leaders. If you're here with me right now, that either means you want to know what Google Keep is or you already know what it is, but you want to see what else you might be missing. So I like to call Google Keep the hidden gem of Google. So let's go ahead and get started. I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I am a ShakeUp Learning Community Manager, which means I help manage the Facebook groups and then sometimes the book studies that we do through Teachable. I help manage those as well. And then I'm also a ShakeUp Learning Trainer. I'm also a Level 1 and Level 2 Certified Educator through Google and a Certified Trainer. So there's lots of Google going on here. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Special Techie. You can also find me on Instagram at Pam underscore edu coach. And I have a blog, spedtechgeek.com backslash blog. And my day job is that I am Innovative Learning Coordinator in South Carolina, and I love it. I get to help teachers integrate technology and other innovative practices every day. So just a little bit about myself. Um, I also have a background in special education and general education. Uh, K through 12, so lots of different experiences that hopefully I can help you out. All right, let's go ahead and give you a little overview about Google Keep. I like to say that Google Keep is the best way to keep track of all your notes in one place. We all have different ways to do sticky notes or write on a piece of paper or in a planner, or sometimes you have it in all those places at one time. I like to think that Google Keep can help you put it all in one place. You can pull it up on your phone, you can pull it up on your device, whatever device you have. It doesn't matter if it's Android, if it's Apple, Mac, PC, you can get to Google Keep. Let's go ahead and show you this little overview. Move myself over here. Life gets busy. Wouldn't it be nice to have a central place where you could save what's on your mind? With Google Keep, you can stay on top of your world by quickly and easily organizing everything you want to remember. No matter where you are. Finalize door list for Thursday's gig. So when you find inspiration, you can file away your ideas. And Google Keep stores them safely across all your devices. And when the time comes, you'll have everything covered. Save what's on your mind. Google Keep. I have a bunch of different ways in this presentation on how you can use Google Keep, and then I will show you a live demo of how you can create any of this. Um, so I'll just go through each one, um, and then I can show you at the end exactly how you can get to Google Keep. I'm gonna show you how to get to it on your computer, Obviously, you can download it on your phone, like in the video, it showed a phone, so it's an app. And the app does have a few different things that you can't do on the computer. Um, you saw they did the little recording. It does have the audio option, and it does do um, voice to text, and it can also do the audio recording so you can play it back. So a lot of neat features that I have on the app that aren't on the web version. So the first one we have here are the to-do lists. I have some templates here that are from Slidesmania. Um, Paula has some amazing templates and these will also be linked in the presentation as well as underneath the video. So you can always explore later when you decide if you want to use any of these. Um, you can see I made one with uh, to-do soon. Uh, an urgent now and a newsletter. So that way anything that I need to use for my newsletter, I can add to it pretty easily. My to-do soon, urgent, and newsletter sticky notes, obviously I like using my Bitmoji, so I add those to those templates. You don't have to add them. Now we've got bookmarking. Um, bookmarking is an easy way to be able to save some links that you want to check out later. Maybe you don't have time to look at it right now. Sometimes you might get an email, somebody shares something, and you want to remind yourself to do that later. You can always add it to a Google Keep note easily. And in these two examples, I have one says Fed Resources from ISTE, 
And you can see the little hashtag there because that means I have it as a category. And I'll show you how to do that. And you can see at the very bottom of the sticky note, it says ISTE and ISTE 18. So I had two categories on there so that way I could go back to it later and look at it. And this was just as I was going through all the sessions through Twitter, I was copying links that people were sharing for this type of um, session. Then we had some choice boards. This one was just, I was trying to gather some of the choice boards that I had that I could share out. And in this case, you can see I've got some choice boards for Google, a weekly choice board template, and a coaching choice board. So I put those all on one sticky note. Obviously, they're not real sticky notes, but I like to call them sticky notes. It might be because I absolutely love office supplies. But we won't get into that. Now, meeting notes. Let's go ahead and talk about meeting notes. You can use these in place of a document during a meeting. I have that on the left-hand side that is showing. During an EDU coach chat, I was typing out some categories and I just put them on my phone. And then on the right-hand side, I have a Google Doc that was open, and I had some other keep notes that I wanted to add to the meeting notes so that way I could share it with my coworkers. And so I had the keep note toolbar open, and I'll show you how to get to that. And from there, I can just copy and paste it right into my Google Doc. So that is a great feature. Then we have comment and badge banks. That just means that there are a bunch of different visuals or comments. Those badges were created in Google Drawings and then added into Google Keep to save to use on documents for students. Just like adding a sticker to a digital page instead of a real sticker. And then on the right hand side, you have an assignment that instead of having the badges, maybe you wanted to put comments in there. So the comments are used in, they can just copy or drag from the sticky notes on the right hand side because you can open that toolbar on the right and you can paste it right into your document and add the comment for your students. So there's a couple different ways you can add those in there. And then collaboration and project management lists. This is really nice if you have a bunch of different people working on anything really. In this case, I have presentation tasks. Let's say me and another partner are working on a presentation together. I might have to do an agenda, a slide template, a team logo, and who knows what else I need to do, but I wanna go ahead and have it on a list so that way, let's say I have a minute to work on it. I can go ahead and do the agenda and click on it. I can even add it to it so that way they can see the link. And you can see that there are two little icons on the bottom, that means I added them as collaborators. So you could just click on that little, the little icon on the bottom that's got the person with the plus. You can just add their email. They get a notification that they've been invited to be a collaborator, and then they can edit the note as well. So it's a really nice feature. And I actually use this for one of my lists with my family, but I'll show you that in a minute. Here it is. This is one of my favorites. It is a personal use. Uh, it's my shopping list. My kids get a kick out of this because you can see I use that template from Slides Mania um, for the grocery list, but I had to add my own little quote in there because I tell them this all the time. And I say, if it's not on here, it's not coming home. So, and they know this is true. So you can see I've got three other people on this list, my daughter, my son, and my husband. Anybody can add to it and I just check it off as I'm going. Or if we're shopping together, we can all be in the store together and we're all getting groceries at the same time, divide and conquer. So lots of cool ways you can use it. And then we are in the process of building a house. So you can see I've got my list of house items that I need to get still. And luckily there aren't as many on the list anymore, we're getting close. Um, but I still need to get a washer dryer and a drying rack. So those are still on my list. And I can share that, I have that shared with um, my personal Gmail. So that way it doesn't matter what device I'm on or which account I'm in, I have access to that note. So another cool use. 
All right. Now, this is what I showed you a little bit about, but I can show you in real time. Um, when you are in Google Calendar, you are in Slides, Docs, Calendar, and Sheets, you can see the little sidebar where it has the calendar, it has Google Keep, and it has tasks. Well, that's really helpful because it doesn't matter what document or what app you're in, you have access to your sticky notes. So your Google Keep Notes, all I do is click on that little icon. It pops up in the window on the right-hand side, and then you can scroll through them just like you had another tab open. So you can see on the calendar, I can see my grocery list. You can see in a Google Doc, I can scroll through my notes. The yellow one, that one is slides. I can see my notes. And the bottom right-hand side, that one is the green share icon. That's Google Sheets. So you can always tell the color in the corner is the type of document. So yellow is slides, blue is docs, and green is sheets. And then obviously in the calendar, you don't see a color, but you can see the blue on the date. And I'll show you all this. So, um, But just know in this presentation, you can flip back through each one depending on what you want to use and what you hadn't tried before, or if it's all new to you, what you where you want to start. All right, and then you can also use Google Keep to grab your image text, which is awesome. I do this every once in a while when it's kind of a workaround. If I have, let's say, a PDF that I want to grab some text from because I don't want to type it all out again, I'll screenshot it and put it in, this, in a Google Keep note, and then I'll grab the image text so that way I can copy it from there and paste it into the document. So it's just a little workaround. Um, there are other ways to do it. You can sometimes highlight and copy and paste, but that doesn't always work. So, and on the left-hand side, you'll see um, Google Keep, and all I did was copy that text from the image that I have on the right-hand side. And then the other option is you can add the checkboxes. So if I want to be able to check them off or click them so that way they, I, they get hidden, I can do that as well. And so on the right-hand side, I just have the screenshot that I took of a presentation that I had before on Google Keep. And I took the screenshot, and then I just clicked on Grab Image Text, and then I can it shows up in the bottom. Now you can see there's a couple different other options you can do with that. You can add a label. So if I want to have presentations as my label, I can always add that. I can add a drawing where I can actually draw right on it. Now, that's something you might need with an app or um, with a Chromebook. You can add a drawing, making a copy of it. You can show the checkboxes. You can grab the text image, and you can also copy to a Google Doc. So I can copy that image. I can co copy everything that's in there onto a Google Doc, and it will show up just like you would if you were typing it in there or copying and pasting it. All right, all these resources are listed underneath this video, but I'm going to show you live what it looks like to go to Google Keep on the computer, and I'm using a PC. looks pretty much the same if you're on a Mac. Some of the shortcuts might be a little different. So there are some options. You've got the Google Support page for Google Keep. You have Google Keep resources from ShakeUp Learning. She's got a bunch of different resources on there that you can check out. The Google Keep customizable headers that I was talking about from Slidesmania. And then there are a couple blog posts that Casey Bell has there. One is the four ways uh, to use Google Keep for feedback and assessment. So if it is something that you want to use with your students, you can. Or you can just use it for personal. And then personalize Google Keep for you and your students. Hopefully your students do have access to Google Keep. Sometimes they don't just because it's hard to monitor through any filters or anything like that. But even if they aren't allowed to use it at school, most of them from probably third grade on have phones. So if you teach them how to use a tool like this just to be responsible for their own to-do list, it is a great resource to show them. All right, let's go ahead and get into a live Google Keep list. So what I'm going to do is I am going to close my webcam. I'm going to open the tab. And I'm going to go to keep.google.com. And it opens up my Google Keep. 
So now I'm in my Google Keep. And again, I can either go type keep.google.com and go right to that site. Or if I open a new tab in Chrome and I'm already logged into my Google account, I can click on the lawful and I can see keep right here. Now yours might be further down where you have to move it up to wherever you'd like to put it. And these are draggable. You can actually click and drag them around, which is kind of cool, because if you use it a lot, you might want to have it right on top. So, let me close that. All right, go back to Google Keep. All right, let me show you across the top, we've got the hamburger right here, the three lines, which is the main menu. If I click on that, it will show only the icons on the left, and when I hover over them, it'll show up. Or, I can shrink them. So, either way. The notes are everything I have here. If I have any reminders set up, they'll show up here. And if I have labels, they would show up here. Now I can create a label. Let's go ahead and create one now. Oops. And I can keep on adding. And then they will show up on the left. And you'll see that in a second. Then you can see archive. If I've archived anything, it'll show up here. That means you can always unarchive them if you want to be able to use them again. And then anything that has been trashed will show up here. And notes in the trash are deleted after seven days. So once they're trashed, you don't have to worry about it. It will empty the trash in seven days. So I'll go back to notes. You can see that I created one label. And that shows up right here. But let me go back. All right, now across the top. I can search my notes, and let's say I have a bunch of notes, and I want to just search for a presentation. As soon as I start searching, just like you do in Google Drive or Docs or anywhere else like that, it'll start to pull up the words that it thinks you're looking for. If that's what I want, I can just click on it, and it'll open it up for me. So the search works pretty much the same. You can look through types, lists. I haven't ever used the things for the colors, but if you like to categorize your notes by color, then if I click anything that's teal, it will only show up the ones that are that color. So a lot of cool features in the search option. Let me click back on notes, so it goes back to the main page. If I hover over this icon, it's a refresh, and this will show list view. This is list view, then you can switch it to grid view. I like seeing it in grid view, but that is completely up to you. Then, let me click on the settings. It shows a few different options for you. If I click on settings, you can choose a bunch of different things. You can add new items to the bottom, or if you just wanted to go to the top, you can uncheck that. Then, moving checked items to the bottom. So when you're using a checklist, it can automatically push it to the bottom, or if you want to keep them where they were in your list, you can uncheck it. Display rich link previews, enable dark theme. The dark theme, I'll go ahead and click on that and click save so you can see the difference. So it is just a visual preference, whatever you want to use. I prefer the light, so I'm going to click on settings again. I'm going to click off of that. You can also choose it under the icon by itself, the settings icon. Reminder defaults. If you always want a reminder set for morning, afternoon, or evening, you can pick your times here. If you don't want sharing as an option, you can just uncheck it. For me, I like to be able to share if I need to. I'll go ahead and save. I'm right back to my light theme, and again, you can just click on settings and enable dark theme there as well. You don't even have to go into your settings. Send feedback. Of course, that's like any other Google tool. You can send feedback. You can include a screenshot. If it's something that you want to add that they don't already have, they're really good about reading these. So if you have any suggestions, make sure you fill it out. Go back to the setting icon. We've got help, which will go to the support pages for Google app downloads. I'll click on that just so you can see which one you want. If you want Android device, iPhone, or Chrome extension. There is a Chrome extension. So if you want to add things quickly to Google Keep from an extension, you can add that. Now, let's go ahead and get into Google Keep itself. 
I'm just going to start at the top. If I click in the box that says Take Note, you can see I've got a title, Take Note, but just to show you some of the other icons. We've got Remind Me, Collaborators, Changing the Colors, which that makes some people super happy. It's up to you. You might want them all the same color, or you might have certain categories. You decide how you want to organize it. You can add an image. You can archive. If I click on the three dots, the ellipses, it's just this more. Then you can see I can add a label, I can add a drawing, or I can show checkboxes. A lot of the times when I'm doing a keep note, I like to add checkboxes because it's usually something I want to check off, but it's up to you, whatever you're looking for. And then, of course, this little icon in the note, if you want it to stay at the top, like I have right here, you click on this little pin note and it'll stay at the top. So, let's do an example. Let's say Twitter chat topics. All right. And I am going to click on the dots and I'm going to add some checkboxes. That way, if I want to type in any of my items, then I can check them off. This time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add an image. It will open up your downloads. If you're on a Chromebook, it might show Google Drive and Downloads. I'll click an image, click open. It shows the image right here in the top. Now, this might be just a reminder for myself, and then I can add to the list. Or, like I was talking about in the video earlier, I can click on the dots and you can see I have more options. Now, I can delete the note, I can add a label, I can add a drawing, I can make a copy. I can hide the checkboxes since I selected checkboxes. I can grab image text or I can copy to a Google Doc. I'm going to grab the image text and see what it does. Now, it did only show one checkbox. So it may not paste perfectly, but at least I don't have to retype all that or copy and paste it from another location. And then I could go ahead and if I wanted to edit this from here, if I hit enter, it'll do a checkbox. And let's see, right, enter, 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 enter. All right, and it pretty much took everything I wanted. I'm going to delete this because I don't need that. Delete this. So that was a lot faster and me going and copying and pasting from other locations and trying to get it in my checklist when I really just wanted the dates. Then, let's go ahead and let's add a reminder. All right, let's say with this Twitter chat topics, I want a reminder and I'm going to pick a date and time. If I want to choose to remind me, let's say on Wednesday, and I want it to remind me in the afternoon. And maybe I want it to repeat. I can choose repeat, does not repeat, daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, custom. So if you have a birthday list, maybe you remind yourself monthly so that we know for the month which birthday you're looking at. But in this case, it does not repeat. I'm going to click save. And it shows when the reminder is going to be. Another thing I can do, click on that, and let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and instead go back. This time I'm going to pick a place. This is pretty cool because it will ask you to allow your location. And let's say I want it to remind me when I get to school. So let's just say... And my old school, let's just pick a school. Then I click Save. Now, instead of a time, when I get to this location, it's going to pop up this notification for this note. So that might be helpful if you are going to do a to-do list. And when you get to school, that list pops up just to remind you. And you can always change these. It is only where I can set a reminder for either location or time. 
So if you don't need that, you can just click the X, delete the reminder, and it goes away. So pick a place. You could pick a time. You do tomorrow, next week, a couple different ways you could do a reminder. And then collaborator. If I wanted to add a collaborator, I wanted to add my personal email account. I click save. It sends me that notification in an email and I can see this little icon down here. That means if I open my Google Keep in a different account, then I can get to it and I can edit it. I can also change the color. Let's say I want this one to be blue. Maybe I want all my Twitter chat options to be blue. Then obviously I already added the image, archive, click on the dots, and I don't want to delete it, but I am going to add a label. I already did presentations as a label. This time I'm going to add a label and say Twitter chats. Enter. Now I have two different labels down here and I can see them on the left hand side. Now I can always undo and let's say I close this because it saves as I go. Now I can see it right down here. If I want it to stay at the top, I just hover over the pin. It will stay at the top. And if you want to rearrange these, you can. You can put them in whatever order you want. Or I can go over to the left. If I click presentations, I don't have anything under that label, so it won't open anything. Twitter chats, I do have one. So however you want to do your labels, it can be really easy to organize your notes. I'll go back to notes. That way I can see all of them. These are pinned. I have my other ones down here. If you have check boxes like this one, I can hide them. I just drag that up so it says the completed ones. I don't want to see them anymore, So, but I don't want to delete them. So I can just leave them like that. And then it will hide my checked off items. Those are the basics of Google Keep when you're just in the web version. Keep.google.com looks pretty much the same when you're on a phone. You might have some different options here, like the audio. I will go ahead and show you real quick new note with a drawing. This is pretty cool. Now, if you have a touch screen, it's great because then it actually looks like an actual signature. And then I can, it shows right here. Taking a long note will automatically add more space as it gets to the bottom. Got it? You can click on the little drop down. So you can clear the page, you can erase, you can change colors, the type of pens, and you can even show dots, squares, rules, and none. Now, if you don't have a touch screen, it's a little harder to work, work with a drawing just by using the mouse. There's a lot of cool things you could do with this. All right, so then you can call it whatever you want. All right, now I'm going to show you. I'm going to open a new tab, and I'm going to just open a doc. I'm going to do a blank doc. And on the right-hand side, you will see that I can either click on Calendar, Keep, or tasks, I'm going to click on Keep. Now, it shows all the notes that I was just looking at. It's pretty cool. And I can interact with them as well. If I don't want to see all the checkboxes, I can hide those. It also makes them a little bit shorter. But let's say I have the presentation test. I can click on the three dots, and I can add to the document, or I can open it and keep. Let's say I want to add it to the document. All it does is copy it, and you can see like my checkboxes showed up as bullets. Once I'm in there, of course, I can always change it if I want to, but it's up to you how you organize it once it's in here. Um, I can click on the dots, or if I just drag, it will also drag it over there, which is pretty cool, because then it's really easy to get your ideas onto 
a Google Doc. And this also works if you're in Google Docs and let's say you want to use, like I was talking about with the badges or with the comments or comment banks, I can click on, let's say, presentation task. I'm going to highlight and copy and paste. Then I can click comment. And all I had to do was copy a part of the Google Keep note that was right here on the right hand side. I'll do that. Let's say this one. Oops, I don't want to drag the whole thing. I'm going to just copy. Again, this time I want it to be down here. Let's See. I'm going to add a comment and paste it. Comment. So there's a lot of different things you can do with the Google Keep toolbar on the right hand side when you're in Google Docs. I'll close that. Now open up a new tab. This time I'm going to go to Sheets. And I'm just going to do a blank sheet. And again, you can see it on the right hand side. I'll click on that. And let's go ahead and click on the dots and see what our options are this time. Now, it doesn't show add to doc. It shows archive, delete, and open and keep. But I can click in it, highlight. It's not as interactive as if you were in Google Docs. I can still copy and paste, and you can still have it in the sheet. Right, close that one. Now, I'll go ahead and open the calendar. I'm going to click on the keep. I can see everything on the right hand side. The good thing is, is let's say with this one right here, I've got the dates. If I went to these, I can highlight, copy, and then let's just say on that date, I could just paste and save. So it would be easy to see all my dates in one place, copy, have an event, and just click done. And I didn't have to open another tab. I don't know about you, but when I open another tab, sometimes I forget what I was going to do. So that is... In Google Calendar, I'm going to go to Slides. And I'm going to go ahead, open up this presentation. And then on the right hand side, I can click on Keep. This time, if I click on the dots, I can add to Slide, Archive, Delete, and Open and Keep. So this one is more interactive. So if I just click Add to Slide, it just copies the text and puts it right there. I obviously don't need it there. I can delete it. Or I can even, let's say, if I wanted to copy it and paste into the speaker notes. I can always do that as well. It's up to you. It just makes it an easy way to get to it when you're working in other Google apps. Close that. Back to Google Keep. Lots of cool things you can do in Google Keep. Go in there, play around, do what you can do to get yourself organized, and share. Make sure you share with your friends. So now that we're done talking about Google Keep, I just wanted to remind you that we are all here to support you in the ShakeUp Learning Training Team. You can see all the pictures right here. And if you click on the Work With Us area, of the presentation. You can also fill this out and read the information. How can we help you? We would love to bring some professional development to your schools, whether it's virtual or in person, and there is a speaking request form. So we would love to work with you. We're so glad you came to our back to school conference and have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of your sessions.